Alright, so hello everyone, this is me again, Vincent. Welcome to the next Godzilla Thon, the 22nd, I think. Yeah, the 22nd um, Godzilla movie. And can you believe that this one, again, was supposed to be the last one in the franchise? It was Godzilla's 40th anniversary, so they decided to not let it drag on more than they needed to. So they decided that this time, that Godzilla will finally die actually so he meets his end in this movie today so godzilla versus destroyer this time around so um i'm gonna get to the plot so i could get to all the other stuff at the end um right now so um in godzilla versus destroyer a dark goodbye in the godzilla heisei series the monster lizard fights with godzilla jr by his side um godzilla's radioactivity inside threatens mankind as he battles a horrible beast um, derived from the original Oxygen Destroyer. Um, so, the plot is basically, right away, um, the island that Godzilla Jr. and Godzilla were on was blown up by a nuclear radiation and um, weapon, so it completely collapsed and was destroyed. And then Godzilla appears in Hong Kong, now with a new look. He's glowing red, he's smoking, he's burning everything and now he's called burning godzilla this time around so after like all all that stuff they're looking for junior to, or god baby godzilla or little godzilla to see if he's still alive if godzilla lived then he surely did and there's like these whale attacks that they claim might be the baby it couldn't be godzilla and at the same time there's this dude developing um an uh, micro oxygen um technology so and it sounds very, and it is very similar to the original Oxygen Destroyer that killed the first Godzilla. So, with all this in mind, and um, there are these creatures that derive from the Oxygen Destroyer. Because um, they were pre, from after Godzilla being killed by the Oxygen Destroyer, there is literally a building built over the same spot that the original Godzilla was killed in Tokyo Bay, which is now not a bay anymore. So they, so these creatures called Destroya, and the English dubs are called Destroyer, which is stupid. They keep evolving through micro oxygen, um, to the point they grow to a giant monster. But um, those are the three things I want to get through, just so I could get to the rest of the detailed stuff. There's Miki back again, who is a more developed character, um, looking for Junior and everything like that. And there's another girl who was a psychic but not anymore and she dresses like zatanna by the way so um and there's everyone else the college scientist guy the professor the the news um lady the guy who's making the micro oxygen stuff and emiko from the original godzilla who's an aunt of the reporter and the college student who tells them about the oxygen destroyer because they realize that Godzilla, um, his heart is a nuclear reactor inside, and he absorbs so much radiation that he cannot handle it. So his heart became a nuclear reactor, and just like a reactor, he is melting down and getting ready to explode. And if he explodes, um, it will destroy the atmosphere and cover up the Earth and basically annihilate the whole planet. So Godzilla will blow up. But now they realize that um, Godzilla is getting too hot and more of his radiation is taking him over. He will actually, even worse, he will melt down and cause a crater in the earth and the earth to implode on itself and burn right through the planet. So now they have to stop Godzilla basically from melting down and killing everyone on the planet. So they use the new weapon, the Super X-3. I haven't heard those words in a while. It's now a flying jet rather than a bagel or a jelly bean. So they use um, these free freeze rays to cool off Godzilla. And it's actually a pretty cool effect when he freezes up. So they think it might work, but it was proven not to work on Godzilla because his temperature started to rise really rapidly. And while th all this is going on, this is where um, we're back at um, the movies imitating popular Hollywood movies. They imitate a whole section of aliens with the Marines and SWAT team coming in um, to fight the um, juvenile forms of Destroya, which ate a bunch of fish, kind of like the original 54 movie where the Oxygen Destroyer disintegrated a bunch of fish. 
so now they're going around um of multiples of them destroying things and it's turned into a horror movie and they use their micro oxygen um micro oxygen beams to basically disintegrate anything that um it explodes on so now they have this creature to deal with and godzilla and while this is going on junior Godzilla. so yeah so while all this is going on um godzilla jr or uh no 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 Little Godzilla shows up, and now he is almost a full-fledged adult, and he finally looks like his dad, finally. And now he's dubbed Godzilla Jr. So, before I add anything else to that, they did, um, and do consider the only way to kill Godzilla before was to use what w what was used to kill the first Godzilla in 54, the Oxygen Destroyer. But they go against the idea, because it would be catastrophic to, um... Japan making it a graveyard. So the only way they think is using the li the literal living oxygen destroyer, which is the destroyer, to fight Godzilla. So the the same thing they did in Mechagodzilla 2, they change um, Godzilla Jr.'s course and use him as bait for Godzilla to follow him since he's following him already. And they get into a fight, Godzilla Jr. and Destroyer, while he's in his flying form. But before that, the military killed half of the smaller destroyers, and then they all combined to one to make an aggregate form, which he destroyed all the military, and he went into his flying form. And Junior started fighting him, and Destroyer started beating his butt, and he injected some micro-oxygen through his alien mouth, inner mouth, um, inside of Junior and sucking some of his energy. But Junior's able to shoot his atomic breath and get him off of him, before he can escape and blow up. And then Godzilla um, finally shows up. And they have a little reunion um, to celebrate. I guess after from what happened. And then Destroyer finally shows up in his perfect form. Which looks like the like, looks like freaking Satan. Actually. Because he absorbed um, Junior's um, energy. And combined it with himself. So now he goes to proceed to kill Godzilla Junior. By throwing him into a building and sh blasting him with his micro-oxygen beam. Basically killing him. And it is pretty sad though again. Because he, cause he just kills him. And you knew the character before. And Godzilla griefed. And now he was out for revenge. To fight Destroyer. Which he does give him the upper hand. Um, Destroyer kicking his butt. Sl um, dragging him all around. Slicing him up and everything. But Godzilla kept on coming and beating him up. Until he had to... Um, he was wounding Destroyer and making him bleed, actually. He had to split up into the smaller Destroyers and basically knock over Godzilla and basically defend himself. But, again, he's been proved to be too powerful. And then Godzilla heads over to Junior, trying to restore his life back for the only a few seconds. Um, until Junior is actually dead and Godzilla grieves over this. And at this point, Godzilla's already at meltdown point. So this is the last moments of his life now. So now he has to fight um, while he, his fins are melting and he's shooting his um, infinite um, spiral ray. He doesn't have his traditional blue atomic breath because of what the um, effect of what happened to him done. His beam keeps getting stronger um, even though his back is flaming and explosions are happening. He keeps on going though and he almost kills Destroya which is kind of the sad thing that he doesn't actually defeat him. It's the army. But at least you know one thing that Destroya, um, he he did actually do some good fighting on him. And the military, before Destroya can escape, freezes his wings and basically blasts him to the ground. And then the last out minutes of Godzilla before he finally explodes, they shoot him with their um, cooling uh, lasers and everything to freeze him off so the explosion doesn't kill anybody. And the whole thing had me in tears. Like, seeing Godzilla die is not the best thing ever, though. And, because it's like, you knew the character before the 54. Like, he died, and it's like, yeah, 54 died. Because he was the bad guy, and it's still kind of sad. But this one was like, this is the good guy Godzilla you knew. And he didn't really deserve to die. It was just, again, his existence and everything. And all that nuclear radiation inside of him. He was basically his own demise. So technically you could say Godzilla did die in the franchise. But you could say that he died because of his own hand. Of absorbing so much nuclear radiation. But don't worry though. Because all that nuclear energy that they thought was going to overrun um, Tokyo. 
it all goes away and absorbs into Godzilla Jr., which makes him into a new Godzilla. And then the movie ends on, like, a few good um, scenes of the original 54, which is really cool, though. And it's sentimental in that way. So that's basically the whole plot in a, run in a nutshell, again. So, what I have to say about this one... The Beam Wars trilogy is over at this point. If you if you like Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and thought it was amazing, well, I definitely recommend this movie right out of the gate. Like, it doesn't have any of the classic monsters like Ghidorah, Mothra, or Mechagodzilla, but it has a new interesting monster that will probably get attention. And unlike a lot of the other movies that are like, yeah, like they mentioned 54, but the story was not technically connected to the original movie. This one has lots to do with it, with the Oxygen Destroyer, the fact that there's two Godzillas, and even the new monster was created from um, Precambrian creatures that came off of Godzilla, mutated from the Oxygen Destroyer. And it, it's pretty awesome, like the effects in this one, the story, the characters, Miki's back, there's again all the characters I mentioned, um, I said about Miki. But the thing that is, is the effects and the, the story and everything that's happening. Like, right away on screen, this is probably the best Night Godzilla destruction scene in the Heisei series, besides the first um, two movies, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and Godzilla vs. Biollante. Like, he's walking around, and you could see that almost Godzilla, in his new burning, glowing form, in his scarred, rash form, walking around destroying the city at night, with that odd presence of him glowing um, and burning. It almost seems like Godzilla is actually in pain throughout the movie. Because it must not feel comfortable looking like that throughout the whole movie. And talking about Godzilla's design this time. Just get right to the monsters. Um, his personality is way more developed. Uh, and further expanded in this one. He experiences sadness and grief and um, like revenge and anger. In this one, in pain, even like a lot of emotions run through Godzilla, and his design is basically they used the suit from the last movie, but just modified it heavily, pu putting a bunch of LEDs and smoke on it to the point where the lights were so hot. Um, um, Ken Pachira Satsuma, it was uncomfortable for him inside to be in the suit, but he was a trooper and he basically did it, kind of like how Godzilla was. And it's really cool that finally, after like so long, moving on, um, so long that um, Godzilla's son finally looks like him, at least like since Son of Godzilla. And I said that um, the one in Mecha Godzilla too, he looked like he looked a little bit like Godzilla. He was um, kind of derpy and everything, but this one's probably the best one, Godzilla Junior. Like he's smaller, he's green, he's got the little fins and everything, and he shoots the atomic breath. And he's pretty cool, though, even though he has his short, sad demise. And he gets beaten up, like, pretty easily a lot. But it's kind of sad because from the last movie, that was his adopted son, and Godzilla really cared for him, actually. And then you have um, Diablo himself, Destroya. Now, Destroya is almost... Um, he has multiple forms, as I said, and they're all really cool. And the effects and everything for him are interesting and... The monster itself is interesting, like, just knowing what I said earlier, it's really cool, and especially, like, his purple oxygen destroyer beam that he has, his micro oxygen beam, and the lightning, and the effects for, like, each of them are really good, like, even when it's the smaller ones running around, it's really cool, and the flying one, and you could tell the sense of scale with all each of them anyways, even when they're crawling all over Godzilla later on, and the the perfect form he also has, unlike um, Mecha Godzilla, Gigan, and Ghidorah, who were like the heart, the toughest, and even Hedra, they were the toughest villains of Godzilla. Um, Destroya is one of those who has a personality. Also, he has no remorse. He even at points laughs at what he's doing. Like he has a weird, sick sensation of just seeing killing, just um, enjoys killing people without no remorse actually, and he has no sympathy and no nothing, so, basically, um, for the people who always say that the movie Godzilla vs. the Devil was supposed to be, tr um, made, it actually was originated from a magazine, and several people claimed that it was true, kind of like King Kong vs. Godzilla, the double ending thing, um, you could read the rest of it on Toho Kingdom, they actually elaborate on the whole, um, 
myth or the misidentification or whatever that the movie existed but it never existed and was never planned so if you even look on like the the his the history of how this movie was made there was no mention of a movie like that so this is the closest thing you're getting to godzilla versus the devil because destroy it personifies the devil himself really and he comes out of a vat in the beginning of the movie from the the micro oxygen stuff in vat six does that say anything um at least but the thing is though too with him being the personification of the devil it kind of shows you that because godzilla didn't really he didn't really defeat him he did give him a good fight and injure him and made him actually run away like he tried to get away from godzilla and that shows you that not even the devil himself could fight off godzilla because godzilla is too powerful at least but um, all the other stuff and everything, I think this is one of my other... It was always my favorite when I was younger, and, um, and, and it's even more now because it's probably the great, the best Godzilla film um, in this Heisei series and probably the series as a whole, the franchise, out of all the other ones I said are like the best at least. So again, if there's no um, classic monsters... But I definitely recommend it if you want to see the end of Godzilla and how this second series, the Heisei series, ends. But um, if anyone really, like back then, thought this was the last Godzilla movie, they really had no clue what was coming up next. And Godzilla was really only taking a five-year rest, so it wasn't that long. But um, I have nothing really much else to say. There was... A little bit to cover on and by the way the title screen actually and the music that's probably the best title screen for a movie besides Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom like it opens with the 54 letters and it looks amazing like how can you not say that title screen is awesome and the music again it's definitely um, more amped up in this movie and actually the sad thing too is that the original creator of Godzilla Tamayuki Tanaka the father of Godzilla, after the movie's release, he actually passed away um, after the movie's release. So the the man followed Godzilla all throughout his life. So it was pretty sad, though, but everyone else was still there. And it was like the Destroyer of Monsters situation. They had all the um, founding fathers of Godzilla all come together, Akira Ifukube, um, Tamiyuki Tanaka, um, everyone, to collaborate on what would what what um what was supposed to be the last Godzilla movie, but we knew that wasn't true actually because look at where we are again. But um yeah, I don't really have nothing else else much to say. So I think the next movie everyone knows what it is um is the first attempt at the Ameri- uh, at an American Godzilla movie before Godzilla King of the Monsters, if nobody knew. So. We're going to go see how Godzilla first went to Hollywood. So, yep. So, hope you guys enjoyed. We kind of share, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. Watch videos. Hope to see you next time. And I'll see you guys all in the next godzilla time. And also, this is Troya!